Okay, so to solve this basic math problem really requires you to have a super strong understanding of one of the most important concepts in all of mathematics. Now, of course, I'm not going to tell you what that is right now. But uh, anyways, if you want to try to do this problem without the aid of a calculator, put that thing away. Just use that supercomputer in between your ears. This thing right here, that's much better than any artificial intelligence. That's actual intelligence. But the problem seems pretty simple. However, a lot of you are going to get this wrong, and I'll explain why here in a second. But the problem is 3 times parentheses, 8 minus 6 parentheses, plus 49 divided by 7. What is this equal to? So if you could solve this, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer here in just one second. And then uh, we're going to go ahead and go through this problem step by step. I'm really going to emphasize this extremely important concept in mathematics. It's an absolute must know if you want to be successful in math, which I assume you do. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to uh, try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go and take a look at the answer. You see the problem. If you need a little bit more time, just pause the video. But here is the correct answer, and that is 13. Now, if you didn't get 13, you're like, wait a minute, I think I did this right. I know what I'm doing. And it's like you got a different number. You might be saying to yourself, ah, this guy, YouTube math man, he's wrong. I'm right. Well, listen, I'm glad that you have strong conviction uh, in your answer. However, I'm going to show you exactly why 13 is the correct answer. And it's important that even those of you that got 13, you may have gotten a little bit lucky here. But nevertheless, if you did get the right answer, let's celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A+, plus, a 100% and multiple stars so you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are an expert in the order of operations. You are a certified professional in something we call PEMDAS, right? Now, what is this? Well, hopefully you're familiar with this phrase right here. It is uh, basically, it's a little acronym that stands for something. I'm going to review this uh, in just one, uh, one second. But if you've never heard of PEMDAS, well, that's likely the reason you may have did this problem incorrectly. But uh, some of you could have just got lucky and got this uh, number as well. But uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at the solution right now. And this is a pretty simple problem to learn about the order of operations. Okay, so in mathematics, if I have two numbers, let's say like 2 and 7, we can perform an operation with those numbers. Now, luckily for us, I think uh, mathematical operations are much better than medical procedures. We're not talking about a knee replacement, a shoulder surgery. No, no, it's not going to be that painful. It's basically what we can do with numbers. So what can we do with any two numbers? Well, we could add them, subtract them, multiply, divide. We can even take powers of numbers, right? So these are examples of mathematical operations, and something like this this addition sign right here is a mathematical operator. So when you have a math problem, and most math problems have multiple different operations involved, like in uh, this particular problem, we have division, subtraction, addition, multiplication. Uh, it's like, wow, what do we do here? Like, you know, how do we start this problem? Well, that's extremely important because the uh, order in which we do these operations will generate different answers. And of course, one is only going to be correct and the others will be wrong. So it's all about the correct order of operations. This is uh, critical. And a lot of the students uh, or a lot of people out there go like, yes, yes, I know Mr. YouTube Math Man. I know all about uh, PEMDAS. I am a certified expert in this. However, uh, actually, students uh, think they know this better than they actually do, right? So I'm going to highlight this right now. And this, uh, of course, stands for something, P-E-M-D-A-S. It's a, effectively a checklist, and it goes from left to right, okay? Now, of course, I'm going to tell you what this stands for in a second, but uh, let me give you a little mnemonic, a little memory aid here, uh, so you can remember this acronym, PEMDAS, and that is Please Excuse my dear Aunt Sally, once again, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. People have been saying this for years, probably my great-grandparents way back in the 
uh, 1920s, we're maybe even using this phrase, or something like it, okay? All right, so we don't know what Aunt Sally did, but we uh, thank her for her cool little phrase. So let's go ahead and just review the correct uh, checklist for the order of operations, and of course, we'll apply it in this basic problem. Okay, so P stands for parentheses. So anytime you see parentheses, we want to start there. Now, sometimes math problems have parentheses, sometimes they don't. Like in this particular problem, we have parentheses, so that's kind of a clue that we're going to be starting there. But it's not just these type of parentheses, also brackets like this, or these kind of squiggly brackets. And in more challenging problems, sometimes you'll have a uh, really big numeric expression. You'll have parentheses, brackets, and other parentheses. So you want to work from the innermost parentheses first. Okay, so of course you need to really practice a, a wide variety of these order of operation prompts to get good at it. But anyways, that's what the P stands for. Let's move on to our next thing here, and that is E. Now E uh, it stands for powers, like two to the third power. So some of you might be saying, well, why don't they just put another P there for powers? Well, uh, what we're talking about here, two to the third power, this little three uh, is part of this entire power. This is called the exponent, and this two over here is called the base. The entire thing is a power, so two to the third power. The three is an exponent, so that's what that E stands for, but you can just effectively think of it as power. Um, as a, a power, okay? So that's what E stands for. Now, let's go ahead and talk about M, D, and A, and S. So you might be thinking to yourself, well, does M stand for, does that stand for multiplication, D for division, A for addition and subtraction? Yes, you would be correct. So it's pretty logical to kind of assume that we're going to do multiplication, and then uh, division, and then addition, and then subtraction, in this strict order from left to right, because that's effectively... But I just said, right, this is a checklist from left to right, but really that's not the way this works. Okay, so it's a little bit of a twist, and this is a very uh, commonly confused part of the order of operations. So M and D and A and S are effectively groups. So what you're going to do next is multiplication or division, multiplication or division. So instead of having another saying like P, E, D, M, okay, because division is first, then multiplication. We're not going to have two sayings. We just need to understand this saying here. So if you see multiplication and then division first from left to right, this is the way you're going to do it, or division, then multiplication, because division comes uh, before multiplication from left to right. So it's whatever you see first from left to right. That's how this works. And then addition and subtraction works the same way. Okay, so that is the order of operation PEMDAS. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Uh, there is a lot of things you learn in mathematics, uh, and you know this is why you need to take notes, because you can't commit everything to your memory, but this thing definitely needs to go into your brain housing group right over here. So take this and go ahead and download it for your long-term memory right up here. Okay, you're going to be using this all the time in mathematics. And again, a lot of students think they know this uh, better than they actually do. You know, they might know it like 80%. You know, like, oh yeah, I know 80%. They have the general idea. However, you know, that's not good enough, uh, especially when you get to, uh, you know, more challenging prompts. All right, so let's go ahead and apply our newly found knowledge of PEMDAS and order of operations to figure this problem out. And this should be pretty easy because the first thing we're going to do is go to the uh, parentheses, right? PEMDAS. So now I'm not going to write this every single time. So you need to kind of keep this in mind. And if you're practicing order of operations, you might want to have you know this little saying or acronym to the side, but you just need to mentally always be thinking about it. So P is parentheses. So we're going to go to the parentheses and we're going to focus inside of the parentheses and we're going to work uh, on doing whatever's inside of the parentheses first until that's done. Okay, so here we have 8 minus 6. There's only one operation to do, subtraction. No big deal, so we'll go ahead and take care of that right now. So 8 minus 6 is 2. Okay, so uh, pretty straightforward stuff here. Now, a lot of you, you know, without even knowing the order of operations, just could have done this and got lucky with the order. But at this point, we need to, again, consider PEMDAS, right? So we're always thinking about this in our brain, and we're like, all right, do we do everything in a parentheses? Yes. Now, there are parentheses here, but there's nothing else uh, to do, so we're kind of done with that. Now, let's go to E. Are there any powers? Nope. 
So we're done with that. Okay, again, uh, not everything on in this PEMDAS is going to be in every single prompt. So now we consider multiplication and division. So uh, based upon what I told you last time, what is the correct next move? Well, we see multiplication here to the left. We see division here. Of course, we have addition here. So we're going to go ahead and handle the multiplication because that's what we see first from left to right. Although, uh, effectively, some of you can be like, well, I could do this. The order is not going to, uh, it's not going to um, change the final result. Yes, well, you know what? As you get more experience in mathematics, you can kind of, you know, uh, take an additional step. But for those of you that are first learning the order of operations, just strictly follow this checklist. Okay, so this is what we're going to do next, three times two. But um, before we do that, no, actually, we are going to do that right now. So three times two. So I was going to say something, but I'll table that for just a quick second. All right, so three times two is what? I mean, this is super easy. This is six. So now we're down to six plus 49 divided by seven. All right, so this is hopefully pretty easy to decide what's the next thing, right? So we have our PEMDAS. Okay, we did everything in the parentheses. There's no powers. We did our multiplication because that's what we saw from left to right. Do we have any more multiplication or division? Yes, we do. So this is what we're going to do next. And then we'll finish up with addition. But now, before we do that, this is what I was going to say a second ago. But uh, if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, I hope that you would consider, if you're getting any value out of uh, what I'm doing, if you're already a subscriber, thank you so much. And by the way, if you do decide to subscribe and just make it easy on yourself. Just do it. Uh, that way you won't have to hear me yak about this. But the only reason I bring it up is that this is extremely important uh, for the growth of my YouTube channel. So, you know, I've been on YouTube for uh, quite uh, some time, actually uh, many years. And it's just an awesome platform uh, for me to teach math. And I teach basic to advanced math like calculus and everything in between. So if you're studying math in that range, uh, you know, I think I have about 2,000 plus uh, videos on my channel, massive amounts of content, but your support really gives me the fuel and energy to keep going. So please just hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you can get my latest content back to the problem. All right, so 6 plus 49 uh, divided by 7. I mean, pretty simple stuff at this point, 49 divided by 7, which of course is going to be 7. So we're down to 6 plus 7 is 13. Now, some of you might be um, saying, well, boy, you know, I write out every single step. Do I have to, like, write out each step just like this? It seems kind of, you know, painful or drawn out, right? Uh, the short answer is yes. Okay, so yes, you do. If you want to be great at math, you want to, you know, you, first of all, you got to realize that math is a language, okay? And you're telling a story, all right? The story is uh, here is the problem, okay? And here is your solution, okay? You're telling a story how you went from here to there. You know, think of it just as a like a novel or an action story. Well, first we did this, and then next the this happened, and then this happened, and then, wow, this occurred, and then here, finally, here is the end of the story, okay? Now, you don't want to, you know, tell a story by saying, once upon a time, the end, right? <laughs> so there's nothing in the middle. Uh, not only are you not going to understand what's going on, your teacher's not going to understand, and most teachers will not give you any credit. So the best way to learn how to write uh, uh, a correct mathematical story, if you will, is to follow the example of your math teacher or a textbook or maybe the way I do it. Okay, so again, you want to um, make sure you have these habits down, which really impact how successful you will be in math. Okay, if you're not neat, if you're not organized, and if you don't practice writing mathematics uh, the correct way, you're not going to, you know, you're not going to get better at it, right? So you want to start making these changes and, and uh, you know, improving in, in these areas. I know it's hard uh, for some of you out there, especially those of you that might be a little bit sloppy like I was. I was really sloppy. I had to force myself to get as neat as possible. And by the way, another little tip is to make sure you use pencil, not pen, uh, when you work because obviously with a pencil you can erase. But uh, if you need help with basic mathematics like the order of operations, uh, check out my uh, Math Foundations mini course. It's a great little basic math review. 
I'll leave a link to that in the description uh, of this video. Also, I um, teach this stuff in my pre-algebra and algebra one courses. You'll find that there. And I have a ton of practice problems on my YouTube channel as well. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.